welcome to another edition of uh, What the Fuck Happenings Here in the Mendham. On YouTube, related to the in Mendham, I suppose. Uh, mostly partly. Um, so anyway, interesting week, as they all are. Stuff in the background. Ducks and things. <laughs> you know, whatever. Um, enjoy, or not. Uh, hopefully technically okay, blah blah blah. So, um, just personal stuff. Mm, yeah. yeah, fuck that. <laughs> no, I did buy some cheap, um, you know, new new e-smokers on eBay. $14 for three of the battery mods and the uh, tank. All for $14. Um, you know, because these are like the these are like the old new kind. See, I get everything like five or six years late. Movies, it's like 15 years late, but whatever. Um, you know, so this is all the rage, you know, a few years ago, these heavier, it's all stainless steel. I mean, all stainless steel. They even have magnets. Magnets. Yeah. Strong magnets, actually. Yes. Pick up scissors with them. Strong magnets. Um, you know, for the switches, brass, stainless steel, you know. Very heavy, and I was thinking about it, man. This this be excellent. This is really the best way to to vape because um, it's an, this is a hell of a weapon. <laughs> you know, for if you have any trouble on the street, you know, just using it like that, and then you know you could bash somebody with this, and it's just like one of those things that kills animals. You know, you could just crush somebody's skull so easy. I'm surprised that it wasn't ever on the news that you know somebody got their heads you know crushed. Um, <laughs> just because it's just a perfect weapon, just beautifully made. Um, anyway, self-defense. Um, but yes, it's uh, much nicer. Um, mm. uh, I gotta get new uh, thingies, so it's, this one's getting a little weak atomizer thing. Um, but it's very nice. Uh, enjoying it. Um, but. I have noticed that there's just no end to how much nicotine I'm willing to absorb. And so it's like, you know, I can just do it all day long. And that's not good. But anyway, um, so that's a little improvement in my life. Uh, not doing the stupid wire thing all the time before, you know, it's always these wires. Probably have to go back to it because I take a while to get the atomizers from China. But, you know, I do this stupid wire thing. Very bad. Uh, very irritating, frustrating, annoying. Uh, but anyway, so like I said, it's an improvement. All right, so that's enough personal news. Uh, the general internet. It's hard to, you know, they're, they're doing this internet, this anti-natalism uh, group conversation live crap, which is fine. Um, you know, I, I don't have anything against it. I just got my fill of kind of live rooms because they always end up just, just, just going on all kinds of tangents, and uh, frankly, the average um, question asker or person who doesn't understand, you know, they're on such an infantile level in terms of they haven't paid any attention to any of the videos made or any of the arguments made, so it's all this redundancy. They just make these arguments from nature, and people just go over all this same crap again. You know, we're made just to survive, and the you know, blah, blah, and you're just like, come on. We, you have all 100 billion neurons, and the best you can come up with is nature told me so. I mean, I mean, fuck. <laughs> all the other animals are doing it. I mean, it's just so immature. But anyway, um, you know, quite obviously, with an intelligence, you can see the game, and you can sort of say, well, you need a rule for that. <laughs> you need a rule for that, yeah. That doesn't work. That's not cost effective. You can figure out all that complex stuff with a brain. Uh, nature can't, so it tortures a lot of stuff. And, you know, because people think, well, that's the standard. So we're allowed to torture a lot of stuff. No, because nature does it doesn't mean you're allowed to do it. You have a brain. Nature doesn't have a brain. You're supposed to perform a little better than nature. Duh. So anyway, I popped into the room, and that's all they were doing, and it was just... Uh, so, I said, fuck it. Having some technical issues with the computer anyway, I just, it, it was raining, and there was a lot of things that just didn't feel like, <laughs> yeah, fuck it. 
the arguments have to be made in some sort of order and some sort of precision. We have to do this premises conclusion thing. Just no point in constantly mixing the premises up and pretending you can have a rational argument um, because you always end up arguing the premises. And that's okay, but you should know that ahead of time that, well, we're going to argue religion today, or we're going to argue the from nature fallacy, or some other dumbass fallacy. So, yeah, enough of that. Um, you know, people did post a, a joke video in one of my, in the comments section to some Japanese, um, whatever it is, music <laughs> video. I don't know, but it really was quite hilarious, so. Um, that's all. So palm, palm, yes, palm something. Palm, palm, palm. P O N P O N P O N. You know, type that into YouTube and just wonder at the spectacle of it. Why and how does such a thing get made? And uh, it's just an amazing piece of something. I don't know. It does stun the brain to just say this is humanity? <laughs> Wait, what the? <laughs> Who thought any of that was a good idea? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it is a kinky kind of porn. I mean, you, you do... I mean, I do remember uh, sometime in my youthish, uh, somebody had a porn video of a, a, a woman fucking a dog, you know, or letting a dog fuck her. And... Uh, I did watch it. I mean, I was, I, I, curiosity did say, I gotta know. I don't know. You know, sort of, you know, I can say I sort of regret it because you don't like those images floating around your head still 30 years later. Some things you should never see, and you just, you know, it's a concession you got to make. It's like I never can get that out. It's like you serve some smells you can never get out of your nose, and some sights you can just never get out of your, the sticky part of the screen. They're burned in. It's a bad screensaver or whatever. Um, yeah, you just won't, you don't want that burned into the LCD. But anyway, completely useless bit of add-on, I would suppose. All right, so it's a serious business. Oh, there really isn't much of that. Um, I didn't watch the last couple of uh, Lord and Savior or Snake Plissken. Apparently he's just going back to this stupid ragging on this SJW kind of subject. So let's, let's find the most radical feminist in the world and do response videos to them and whatever. I mean, let me go find the most radical, racist, chauvinist, Christian lunatic and do response videos to them. Is, is there really a point? I mean, it's really a point in arguing with lunatics. So it's really not the subject and people want to pretend that's the subject, fine. So it's it's just the pigeonhole thing. It's just like instead of, instead of dealing with arguments about... Um, socialism, the, you know, the people like Anna Conovat will just call you a communist. So you can't have a rational argument about even distribution or fairness or, you know, any kind of thing like that, or even just social productivity, what's socially productive, um, because as soon as it has something to do with taking or preventing somebody from being who they are, asshole, um, no, that's, you're a commie. And this smells like the same kind of bullshit, you know. Um, deny there's inequity. Deny there's structural problems in creating equality between the sexes. You know, problems that we just can't even overcome. You're not going to overcome that the female has to be get pregnant, and you're not going to overcome periods and hormones and all that shit. Um, you can only try to compensate. And they don't want to do any of that. They don't want to understand. They just want to go into their role play where, you know, I'm king and, uh, you know, the females for fucking and gesturing. You know, she's, maybe she can make me laugh now and then or something and then she can go make me a sandwich. And that's their attitude. Um, and, yeah, I mean, for, uh, well, Snake Bliskness is just going back to his roots. He's, you know, he belongs in Kentucky or whatever the fuck it was, uh, Oklahoma or whatever. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> with his kind, you know, in the trailer park. Cliche, but it's, you know, too apt in this circumstance, because, frankly, if he was born now, he'd be born in a trailer um, by gun nuts and lunatics. And, like I said, he's just, just going home to his roots in, in Moronica. Uh, so anyway, um, and he even concedes it in one of his response videos, he said something, somebody asked, well, why are you, you just to picking low fruit or something? And he said, well, of course, because, yeah, why would I argue with a rational feminist? Because I agree with them. So what's the point? Oh, oh, so it's, the ideas aren't really that threatening then. Is that what you're conceding? I, I imagine he would concede that if I put it to them, or if, if a man cuts his penis off, I think that's saying, I really don't, I'm not doing the man thing anymore. I mean, he cuts his penis and his nuts off. You could figure that out, couldn't you, Snake Plissken? That calling him a man would be kind of offensive in a way, because you're just kind of denying the fact that the biggest part of his maleness, uh, the only part of it really, is gone now. The hormones and the physical device. And yet you're going to still claim he's male? I don't know, that sounds kind of stupid. Uh, obviously, he might not be a woman, <laughs> but he's, he's not fully male either. And so maybe he should have a pronoun, retard. And maybe it should be his right to choose it, retard. Like, retard, I'm choosing for you, because you're behaving like a retard. All right, anyway, enough of that. Um... So I guess the big thing I wanted to get to was a thought experiment. So there were some comments by the troll, the, it's probably just the John Wayne troll guy, so he's using other people's names now. And he uses Benatar's name and has uh, made a few comments um, uh, arguing that somehow Benatar wouldn't be for euthanizing animals. And as I pointed out in his book, he does preface his book by saying everything I'm saying probably applies to animals even more than it applies to humans, um, but he made sort of a rationalization argument that I, there's no real, I have to make this a human first argument just because of people's inability to comprehend. <laughs> and they're not going to comprehend the scale of the problem, so I'll just start with the obvious of our human biases and blah, blah, blah. But anyway, he has the same opinion. Animals are also better never to have been. It's not just humans who are better never to have been. And uh, so they're making the claim that somehow Benatar would create life or preserve life if it was completely unnecessary to preserve it. So a scenario would be like waking something up that was in a coma or something. And so I thought of it like a thought experiment. A question would be, uh, let's say an alien civilization shot a probe here and it put everybody into a sleep. Every animal on Earth, every human is asleep, and they're not going to decompose or anything, they're just going to be asleep. Where they lie, they're going to stay there, and uh, because nothing's moving, you know, nothing's going to eat them or anything like that, and so they can be waken, woken up. And let's say they can be woken up with some kind of simple process, you know, uh, mumbo-jumbo, hocus-pocus, and they wake up. And there's one person left, you, and <laughs> that who isn't affected. And uh, what do you start waking up, and why? Because it's really creation. The bottom line is, is re-engaging the system in any way would just be creating the system again. And so, um, and you know that if you start waking people up, some asshole is going to wake up the mosquitoes, and some asshole is going to wake up crocodiles, and some asshole is going to wake up aid viruses. Some asshole will wake up the crap and the shit. And so, do you take the risk? Do you take the chance of initiating the process by waking anything up? Um, and then I thought of an angle on that th same thought experiment. So what if the process, though, actually has killed half the things? So half the living things that are actually dead and will not be able to wake up. And so, everybody you're going to wake up, you might wake them up to a world where their brother and sister are dead, or their wife is dead, or their kids are dead. And so they're going to wake up in a world that's really going to be in bad shape. 
and also even if we wake everybody up half the population is dead and so it's huge infrastructure crisis and so the next few years are going to be really rough because there's going to be people who go bankrupt because of it and they're going to be broke and they can't pay the bills and nothing's going to really work the same it's going to be lots of pain and suffering endured so you're going to be waking the world up to a really bad start and do you really think there's anywhere to go from there and do you think they could even recover from that big a tragedy I mean, look how much 9-11 cost. Four trillion dollars of wasted money over a petty, well, you take that. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, back at you, fucker. Yeah, four trillion dollars of wasted resources just blowing shit up and killing and maiming and starving and torturing people out of petty revenge. Uh, <clears throat> so that's the world you'll be waking them up to. Um, so anyway, I just wondered uh, what kind of rational, what, what would be the rational reason, a non-selfish reason. So if all you have is, I want somebody to fuck, or I want somebody to talk to, well, those are kind of immature, silly reasons. Because obviously this is about the implications of engaging a, a biological mechanism that will have thousands and hundreds of thousands of years, potentially, of all kinds of horror that will be made possible. And so talking about what you want in that context is a little bit silly. So you have to sort of make a rational argument in defense of the need to wake the people up. Like there's some, how they're better off awake. Now, in this state, they don't dream, they don't do anything. They're just they're asleep in an unconscious state. And then what if I did make it, though, that they're actually having pleasant dreams? So what if I change it one more time and say, in the state they're in now, asleep, they're having very pleasant dreams. Not fantastically pleasant, but just pleasant. Uh, you know, they get fucked a little bit, they have a little bit of trauma, but no real cancer dreams, no horror dreams, just kind of you know, try and win sometimes kind of dreams. That kind of stuff. You know, satisfying dreams. Do you wake them up? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think it's, that's probably enough stated. I mean, I think it's a it's thought for broking. For broking? For broking? For broking. <laughs> thought for broking. Yeah, I'll keep that word, I think. I don't know what I'll use it for, but it seems like a good word for boking. <sighs> yeah, I kind of like it. Um, speaking of talking, there was a guy in the, in the live room who was uh, transsexual. I mean, I, I should have guessed, but you know, I really didn't. I just thought he was really eccentric. You know, and he was talking in this bizarrely eccentric manner in terms of his speech. You know, like, Valley Girl times ten, kind of. Valley Girl from Canada, you know. Really, really f bizarre. And I probably shouldn't have said anything, but I did, you know, just kind of, you know, question the authenticity of this character of a human being. Like, why would somebody be that affected? Because, it, like, how the fuck do you talk like that in a world where, you know, communication has to be within some kind of boundaries. You can't just be totally wacky. Uh, but anyway, um, so, yeah, I probably said something offensive. Sorry if I did, but, you know, it's the way it is. It, it, it was on my mind. It wouldn't have been honest for me just to pretend I wasn't totally distracted by how affected his speech was, because I was totally affected by it. Uh, made it almost un incomprehensible. You had to keep trying to understand what he was saying because he was saying it so badly. Um, uh, so uncommonly, let me put it that way. Uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so I don't, I don't think this is a much point in dragging it out. I don't think there's anything else I have to comment on. Um, somebody probably did something interesting somewhere, and I probably should make note of it, but it's just, yeah, I'm just, um, like I said, it's, it's the, the sloppiness of all this conversation that it's, I'm 
realizing. There's just no point in keep having sloppy conversations. You have to just do a conversation and be done with it. Here's my religion argument. Here's the 4,000 ways I'll explain to you how religion is just nonsense, idiotic. These fables have nothing to do with reality. They're not useful. Um, use real examples from the real world. Don't keep making up these fake bullshit um, uh, people that you know, like like somehow they're real examples of a real circumstance when they're not. Um, and certainly you can challenge people with real thought experiments or what ifs, but you know, doing this Zotki cage or cave thing and pretending that uh, somehow you know as a fact that if somebody rises out of a small world and ends up in a big world that somehow they'll die is <laughs> you know, no. Um, they'll figure it out. They'll become a, a street cat. You throw a cat in the street and it figures out, it figures out the rules in ten days, you know. It doesn't take too long before it's just as street as everybody else. Uh, so, I mean, you know, uh, I'm just saying false premises are just useless. Um, I, you know, and, and the, you know, I sort of leaks into this whole argument with Piro about what's legitimate confidence and what you should do with confidence, whether confidence should close a subject. And um, I don't think it should. Uh, you know, somebody can make an argument that should be allowed to make the argument without being ridiculed and attacked for it. Um, and um, just redundantly bashed over the head with dogmatic statements rather than anything called evidence. Uh, but anyway, we'll get to that. I'll make a physics video. So, um, yeah, I, I, I should fix the default links on my videos just so they're better labeled. Um, you know, I do have a, a channel, Draft Science, so you go there for the physics conversations, most of them. So, even though physics will come up here now and then, uh, the conversation on physics is really on that other channel. Um, or the website, draftphysics.com. Yeah. Uh, anyway, anything else? No, just move along. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, there's lots of interesting things happening. i got cameras to play with and stuff to do and, um, you know, lots of things on my to-do list. Butterflies haven't shown up yet, so yes, lots of butterfly videos, hopefully in the future, uh, <laughs> you know, or something like that. Um, who knows? Waiting for the hummingbirds. That would be a good challenge. I'm going to see if I can get a good picture of a hummingbird. Uh, but whatever. These are minor ambitions. Um, yeah. Bigger picture. Lots of things on my mind. Lots of ideas. Um, and uh, I'm working on it. And so we'll see what happens. That's enough. It's not, yeah, I'm tired a lot. I have to fix that. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's hard living with it. I mean, I didn't, uh, you know, I'm surprised by the coffee thing. Like I said, I, I, don't, I don't need to drink coffee, so I'm off coffee easy. But, yeah, I think my body's really missing the caffeine. And, uh, you know, I don't really want to find some other source of caffeine. I mean, I'm taking some. I mean, I, I do pop a pill in, my, in now and then, um, but I'd like to be able to find some other way to uh, force a little more action out of the machine, because <laughs> it, it does get discouraged and depressed, and, you know, and it, a, a real way to fight against that is to have anxiety and some sort of tension and some sort of energy, energy, energy. So if you have energy, uh, you know, and you can't just take a nap, um, then, uh, you know, that kind of forces you to be more productive. And I do sort of need to be forced. I mean, I do have to kind of force the march because it's, you know, it's hard to do it for the personal fun of it. <sighs> it's, it 
it's not any fun. Uh, so anyway, it's really no, yeah, the last snake list in this video, he's picking on fat issue people, and yeah, obviously people who think fat is, you know, whatever the ideal state of being are retarded. And, you know, they're just in some huge denial. I mean, they just basically say, I can't fix it, so I'm going to just pretend, you know, it's just, I mean, <laughs> it's kind of an app cliche or whatever you want to call these things, but, I mean, it's lipstick on a pig. I mean, it's, you're just bullshit, and, you know, there's nothing good about being fat. Um, it's better not to be. Just a fact. And, yes, I, like I said, these people who want to sit there and defend yeah, you know, they're defending their own inability to control it, and therefore they're saying it's something that has to be. And fine, maybe it does. Maybe they can't control it, but you're not going to fool me into thinking it's a good idea for you to be fat. Cause it's not. Ugh, anyway. <sighs> I mean, it's the kind of stuff you just, I just don't see the point in arguing. Just let the crazies say the crazy stuff because they need to, and you move on. These aren't these aren't real issues. There's, there's no crisis coming. I mean, if they start saying they're entitled to five seats on an airplane, okay, then you can complain. But until then, yeah, shut up. <laughs> you don't, don't worry about it. Lots of silly people need to say silly things. And a lot of them just couldn't matter. And the fact that the media focuses on all this bullshit is the very reason why everything goes to shit is because no one pays attention to the stuff that matters, which is the insane financing of our social infrastructure and culture. And the crisis that is the insanity and unsustainability of almost every aspect of it. But let's not pay attention to that. Let's worry about, you know, trannies and fat people. Anyway, till next time, and probably such. Yeah, well, see, you can always add something. So just the cop thing just popped into my head. And all these subjects have solutions, right? I mean, the whole problem of the fact that the politi two political parties are now so myopic in their view of the world and so owned by special interests that they're on, you can't vote for them. I mean, the Republicans are too owned by billionaires looking for tax cuts and religious kooks, and the Democrats are too owned by welfare whores and immigrants. And so, like, there's nothing to vote for. And But the fix is a real democracy, you know, where you don't have your vote stolen by some majority in the state, that you actually get representative proportional to your presence in the whole country. That's what the Congress should be is a representative of the country, instead it's representative of the majority, and that's it. It doesn't represent any of the minorities, except the ones that are segregated. Um, so that's, you just fix it, you fix it. The cop thing, you fix it. Yeah, yeah they all got to wear cameras, and you can't let juries, you can't make jury selection for celebrities and cops. Obviously, juries are selected because people have to be liars to get on the jury. Right? I mean, that's how it works. Because they ask you a question like, have you ever seen a cop do something stupid? And you say, yes. Well, you can't be on the jury. <laughs> yeah, you know, it really is that bad. You know, have you ever heard anything bad about this celebrity? Oh, uh, yes. Oh, uh, therefore you can't be on the jury. You know, it's that kind of thing. So people have to lie. And, and lie a lot to get on one of those juries. And so it's just a bunch of liars on the jury who have tried to get on the jury by lying. And obviously those people probably, they're, uh, uh, what they're going to try to do isn't what justice requires. They're going to be trying to do something other than justice. So anyway, um, but it really is obscene. You know, these different cases are just, uh, I mean, there's no excuse in America. Um, for the grotesque human rights violations committed by cops that are defended by idiots. And they are idiots. <laughs> you know, um, 
don't be a cop if you're scared. If you're scared, you shouldn't be a cop. If you're scared and you have to just shoot all eight bullets, it's no, no, yeah, you shouldn't be a cop then. You, you're too stupid. You can't be a cop. I mean, there should be a rule here somewhere. Anyway, um, it seems like it's, it's probably fixable. Is the point? Uh, complaining isn't fixable. Uh, but anyway, uh, until next time. I, well, complaining is good, but I mean, you have to have policy fix it. Yeah. And certainly you have to de incentivize cops being irresponsible, so they have to be punished. They can't still go to get their pensions and get all this stuff for being complete assholes. But when you reward them for being assholes, you'll get exactly the wrong response from them. Kind of a thing. Sloppy add-on, but whatever. Till next time.